Hi, this is another episode of Raw Wedding. I'm your host, Fabian. And as so often, I'm joined by my friend, Professor Andy. Hi, everybody. So this week at the Studio Alpha was, again, exciting because we had another 20 ventures applying to our startup um, accelerator. And yet again, it shows in our discussions with them how core it is, uh, what problem they are set out to solve. So the background of the team, their connections to the problem, not only shapes the potential market, but also their resilience through the inevitable tough times. So I think uh, this underlines the, the need for deep understanding of the major issues that, that lie ahead, which is why we are focusing today on identifying and understanding the problems that await us in the near future. So that was my suggestion that we could talk about that uh, in this episode. Exactly. So simply spoken, the success of a startup depends on what problems they tackle. So the larger the problem, the larger the potential market, they then can develop viable solutions. Let's discuss the problems of tomorrow. Okay, so what we want to give our viewers uh, a little background of knowledge to better understand how mankind has overcome major problems in the past. So let me just show uh, this picture from uh, Ray Kurzweil. So our home galaxy and so the Milky Way <laughs> and also our big planet, problem, big problem. Also, also planet, planet was formed about uh, 10 billion years ago and around 4 billion years ago life emerged on our home planet, the Earth. And so about 500,000 years ago, Homo sapiens, so our species evolved. And when you look at these milestones since this four billion years, we have several bigger milestones in this time. And as soon as the Homo sapiens appeared on this planet, all these milestones are innovations that were made by mankind. And yes, if we conclude this now to, to what happened on the, on the planet we had in the beginning, the life that emerged from biochemical processes. Then later we had a long period of biological evolution that has produced a species of wisdom. So we, our species, and this species has created over uh, of a half a million years, various cultural innovations. And for about 200 to 300 years now, we have been in the technological age. So let's say it, it's the industrialization. How many so years? Three, two, 200 to 300 years. Mm -hmm. and, and the question now is, what, what is the future of this planet and also of our species? So basically these are, this is the foundation for us as entrepreneurs. Can you describe the different elements how we can def make a definition of a, a given problem. Yes, of course. So e existential problems or big problems, they have to be popular. They are growing. It's just not a, a little small problem for a specific group of people. Uh, and it's growing. It's urgent. So we have to solve it now. It's very expensive also to solve that problem. And so let's say it's also mandatory and these problems appear frequently. It's not just that you have this problem once or two times, uh, you have always, it's on and on, it's going on and on the problem. So it's really a frequent problem. Make an example for a, a problem. So let me take our own company. So when we started our company in the year 2000, information technology was new to most of the companies. So your know, web technologies, yes, web technology. the web technology. So the, the banks were our first clients. They were the first that invested heavily into this new internet technology. Yes. And then our bet was back then, most of the people 
thought we are not. But our bet was that this technology will cause a growing demand from the economy, from the businesses. Mm -hmm. And that was the case. So more and more companies wanted to build cost, custom specific web applications. And then this then that was very famous. So all the people that, were, that said the internet is nothing that is necessary. This is just a hype. They said, look at the projects because and that was true. More, more than 50% of all these projects basically did not work out. It was just like a lot of investments, but you, we did not accomplish to implement the solution that added value to the companies. Yes. But nevertheless, more companies wanted to build their own setup on this internet technology. And this, these projects became more and more complex. So this was a typical situation. We then saw that our bet is paying off. Namely, this market just grew tremendously. Yes. So all these companies had more and more problems, namely to manage these projects. And that's where then Atlassian came into the game. Yeah, but the interesting thing at Atlassian is that it's like the same story with the uh, gold diggers in, in, in the United Levi's. States, that there were the gold diggers. And on the other hand, there were companies providing tools for the gold diggers. And like Levi's, yes, they provided a, a, a trouser, a very good working trouser for these gold diggers. And so this is, was, was the strategy of Atlassian and they started in web one. So when all these uh, Java engineers were um, developing apps on web one, they used, they had to have a tool to manage the development processes, development projects. Okay. Right. For my system. Thing that these tools that Atlassian were building are also used later for web two. So also Google, Facebook, uh, Amazon, you name it, all these companies in web two also used this the same tools from atlassian to build this web 2 internet so they had a, a really quite good uh, timing to bring this levi's jeans to the gold diggers you know because they were not only digging gold like web one they were later also digging for platinum or whatever so they could use this tool and the fun thing is also that confluence the product confluence itself is a web 2 technology so I think, yes, that was quite good. And yeah, of course we could join this ecosystem and we could grow with, with this ecosystem, I think. And it wouldn't grow when it, there wouldn't be a, 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 a popular, frequent, uh, mandatory, a, expensive problem. This is absolutely tremendously as a startup that you go into a space where you expect as fast a growth as possible. And. There, are, there were elements that, for instance, also what we realized is then when we had the, our contacts at Atlassian, then suddenly it, it we were informed that this person has left the company and that occurred more and more often. What happened is that these people got poked away by the other companies, like you mentioned it, Facebook, Google, and so on. So that was another indicator that this problem is growing. And it's, it's getting more and more popular. So yeah. more and more companies wanted to use Jira to manage their workflows. It became kind a urgent feeling in the United States, especially in the Silicon Valley. Whereas in Europe, hey, yeah. it took That's us like nearly 10 years till also in Europe, we felt from the companies that we felt that they felt themselves that this is an urgent problem, but they needed like 10 years more time than we experienced it in the United States. But of course, if, if you are in an information technology class, so like the Silicon Valley is or was, of course, then you have more people who have that problem. But when you compare it to Japan or to Europe, where still we have a lot of problems in us industrial industries or other service industries yes that it was not that popular okay that's why it, it took more time and that's why i think also we were not growing that fast as less and less growing at the same time yeah yeah but then more as a company you realize that if you're not working so especially in your development teams when you're not working with jira 
then it's just tremendously more expensive for you. So let me again show quickly that, that picture. Yeah, exactly. Where are the new problems, right? So where yeah, do we find we, nice we, big problems? We are asking, okay, what is, what's next? Okay, what's next? I think humanity is currently facing three, three big problems. They, they call it dystopia, okay? And, and these dystopias could lead to a post-human world. So that means the Homo sapiens, the success story of Homo sapiens from these 550,000 years would become a, a Homo obsoletus, not a Homo sapiens, a Homo obsoletus. And there I would like to discuss three, three, three developments that can lead to this ultimate slide. So on one hand, um, it's uh, climate collapse, okay? Climate collapse, I think we, we could talk about that. We could also talk about what is the problem of climate collapse. I think it's one of these big problems because it's popular, it's frequent, it's very expensive to solve. And we could also discuss about what entrepreneurs have to do to solve the problem. Yeah, that we do not, that our species uh, will not end at, because of this climate co collapse. The second dystopia that we could talk about could be the um, artificial intelligence. So what happens when we have a, a very a general artificial intelligence? So that is, that they call it the singularity. So that, that we have a, an artificial intelligence that is quite same intelligent as we are, or even more. And the third, third topic that we could talk about in the next episodes is biodigital fusion. So that we use gene technologies, that we use uh, nanotechnologies, that we use robotics, and then to be generate with these technologies uh, a kind of an artificial human being or an artificial society and you know, artificial mankind. So I would love to talk to these three to these three topics. Oh, okay. Problems, yes. That we are not going to do this right now, right? No, no. I think uh, it takes a lot of time to. We we should deep dive into these three scenarios. Yes. Okay. Okay. So next time, which one we want to start with? It's up to you. I'm. I, I go to Japan for robotic conference, so probably we could talk about robotics. Let's do I'm that. Somehow convenient with uh, AI um, um, because we use it in our daily uh, on a daily basis. With climate, uh, I'm not a specialist. I, I, I do projects now in this uh, specific area. I can explain a little bit what we do in these projects in these research projects. But yeah, so robotics would be fine for me. And yeah, I think um, that would be the that could be a tea so that we really talk about big problems. And so for startups there are or the entrepreneurs worldwide who are thinking about ah, what kind of problem could we solve? Yes, we could we could uh, use this we could use this. But uh, let me to close this discussion, uh, I'd like to show you something that I do since two years already. Okay. So uh, what I've been doing is an exercise with my students exactly on these three top dystopias and so can you just give us a little bit background backdrop about your students how old are they uh, what what have to, what kind of background do they have uh, personally like uh, uh what's so, it yeah they are almost swiss germans um in in, in it there are these are master students so they have already their bachelor degrees so they they have already worked they're around 25 to 30 years old. And I do it also in the executive school. So with, with the MBA students, and they are between 30 to 50 years old. And they are already in, in leadership positions, in mostly in, 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 in Swiss corporates or German corporates. And many of them are engineering background, right? Some of them, yes, exactly. And they want to get into, so they, on this, on this ladder, this dual ladder that they do not climb on the expert ladder, so they want to climb on the management ladder. So that's why they do an MBA so to switch from the expert ladder to the management ladder. And mainly they do this because they want to have, earn more money. They want to have a higher salary. Oh, change change the, the the way how they work. So they do not work in, in a specific engineering topic. They want to lead an engineering team, something like that. You know? yes. mm -hmm. 
what we see on the slide is that the questions that they ask uh, the students. So I, I show them these three scenarios. I talk a little bit about trauma collapse, about the general artificial intelligence, about this bio digital diffusion. Science fiction. It's, it's science fiction. And, and then the students have to answer these uh, following questions. So what innovations are needed to prevent this scenario? So what, what do we have to do that the, the climate will not collapse, that we stay at least in a crisis? Then how do these innovations need to be developed or, or, or implemented? Then also what values does these innovations create for planet, people and profit? And the fourth question is so also always uh, who is in charge? So who should solve that problem? Is it the entrepreneurs, managers, the state or NGOs or UN the nations? Yes, I don't know. EU. And the EU, exactly. And guess what? To these four questions, who is responsible? What do you guess? Yeah. Okay. These are, these are people working with, having a long working experience. So they know that their companies are solving these problems, right? So it's entrepreneurs. Nope. <laughs> it's not entrepreneurs. So the most mentioned answer is state. So no no more. yes, and somehow also so international committees. Even no, no. Seriously, yeah, it's sometimes within That's the NBA, strange, within huh? the NBAs, I have also seen corporates. They say they have to be the role model also later for SMEs and startups. But yeah. How come do you discuss this? Why they yeah, yeah, tell more? Why? So what do they say? And yes, so why? So how? So hang on. So first of all, when I hear this question, then I go through. So there are very many, there are many innovations, revolutions in different industries. And I know that the, this has always happened with companies. Or in other terms, I, when I say the answer is government or these NGO, then I, I must have an example in my in mind what they did. I just there's just oh, no example. This may due to social cultural backgrounds of the students. So uh, yeah, when you grew up in Switzerland, Germany, probably there could be uh, a reason because they're almost Swiss and Germans, uh, or they are simply no there are simply no entrepreneurs within this this, this, this student body. Yeah, and you are right. When we go back to Schumpeter, I don't. And what he's Please. saying, what he's saying. So is, how do you yeah. think these are all socialists? No, your students no. are. You just no. are, you you are a socialistic university you're working on, and you only. It doesn't matter the, the university. It doesn't matter the university. But when you grow up in a mindset of me in the world, when you have an external locus of control, in you will not come back to the self-efficiency approach that you say, aha, there's a problem I, me, should have to solve or should, should, should solve that problem now. Uh, I think this is it's personal traits. It's, it's a mix between social demographic uh, circumstances and the personal traits of these of the students. And of course, because they are students and not entrepreneurs. So you cannot educate an entrepreneur. So for me, it's not the problem, this answer, but so go back to, to going back to Schumpeter. Yes. Also in theory, if you talk about this constructive, this destruction, constructive destruction, he always crazy, crazy. it's, it's innovation. Okay. And who is responsible for the innovation? Yeah. It's the entrepreneur. It's the entrepreneur. And so when we have these three big problems that we will discuss in the next episodes in, in, in a deep dive. And when we talk about solutions to that problems, we talk about innovations. We cannot solve that problems with solutions that we have invented the last uh, years ago. So we need new, new solutions. Maybe we new, need also new technologies to solve the problems. And who else than an entrepreneur can pursue these opportunities? You know? As a, you know, for me, it's clear and for theory as well. But my empirical experiment with my students, and we were talking about now, it's about 20 classes already. I made this exercise. This, you know. Okay. So let's tackle th this in our next episode. Okay. Yes. So there are, we are very lucky. There are huge problems to solve. 
And also the good news is obviously your students don't feel like they want to become entrepreneurs, but we know the big problems can only be solved by entrepreneurs. That's yeah. it for today. Yeah, and the state has to allow it at least. So the, the state is not unimportant. The state, so all the rules. And sorry, it's the other way around because they don't know what to allow. So what they do, like e EU is specialized in this. So there are so many new solutions coming up to solve existing and new problems. And what they do is as soon as you see, oh, look, there's a company make a lot of money, has a very great solution for a given problem. They start regulating it. So basically yeah, the state should, should be just not do nothing. That's the best. Yeah, uh, I, I don't know the, the, if the word in English is right. The catalysator is it catalysator, but still the, 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 it, it was the state who said, now we have a law that it's not allowed to drive with, with an engine um, that has not the catalysator. So of course the state has also its role, but that this is mm -hmm. not our, our turf. So we don't discuss about that, but uh, I, you know, it's not completely unimportant. And from our perspective, also as Studio Alpha, we, we are looking for these entrepreneurs who, 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 who want to pursue opportunities. So exactly. In that sense, yes, we could have also have a nice talk with have colleagues. They, they could nicely argue why the state is so important. I think let's keep it, let's keep it just beside, but because we are not politicians, we, we are not in a party, so we, we don't know nothing about that. So let's talk about entrepreneurship. Yes, just <laughs> yeah, we do this next time. Thank you very much so far. Brilliant. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, apply to studioalpha.capital. See you next week. Bye. Bye bye.